Chicago, we have a quarterback. The Chicago Bears, led by QB Justin Fields, okay, putting together one of the best performances for a quarterback probably in Bears history, okay, especially on the ground, fall just short to the Miami Dolphins by three points, partly because they got robbed by the referees at the end, okay? What's going on, guys? I'm back with another Chicago Bears post-game reaction video, which I'll be doing after every single Bears game this year, win or lose. So if you guys saw my thoughts after each Bears game, definitely be sure to subscribe to my channel. And guys, this hurt, okay? This actually did hurt. I know this season is not about wins, okay? So yes, this loss does improve our draft position. Long-term, yeah, probably will benefit the Chicago Bears because we saw everything we wanted to see out of the Bears offense in this game okay the Bears offense completely exploded again Justin Fields had a phenomenal day and we lost so that improves our draft position so we can hopefully draft you know a star defensive lineman or maybe trade back get some extra picks because obviously the Bears roster needs help long term so yes this does probably help us out long term but man I wanted Justin Fields to get this win because he deserved this win so freaking badly okay because going up against the Miami Dolphins one of the best teams in the NFL the Dolphins with Tua Tugavailoa okay they have not lost a game in which Tua has started and ended that game okay they were undefeated before this game obviously they beat us in this game and Tua did destroy us okay but this is one of the best teams in the NFL so to match up against this team okay with their defense playing as bad as it did and to basically have a chance to win this game at the very end and have that chance taken away from you after the referees do not call pass interference on a clear pass interference for Chase Claypool going down the field. Like, what the heck? I mean, Tua was getting all these calls the entire afternoon, okay? He was underthrowing guys and even got, you know, even plays that probably should not have been pass interference. Okay, one where Eddie Jackson barely touched the guy. They were getting called pass interference for the Miami Dolphins because Tua was underthrowing those balls and that's what the officiating chose to do, okay? So I thought being consistent, they would probably give Chase Claypool that call when he was clearly being hugged from behind, clearly being interfered with going down the field. But no, okay, the referees, for whatever reason, decided to not give the Chicago Bears that call. And that call, guys, would have given the Bears at least the chance to probably get a field goal move this game into overtime maybe win the game okay with how good Justin Fields was doing in the red zone so to not get that call man that is complete bullshit okay I don't want to say that was the only reason why we lost this game because obviously our defense played horrendous okay so yes it was not the only reason but at the end of this game man if the officiating was more consistent the Bears probably could have won this game the NFL has a big problem with officiating and the lack of you know, punishment for officials that do not do their jobs, okay? There's no punishment for these guys. Like, last year, you know, obviously that game against the Steelers, um, I'm blanking on his name right now, but that referee, the one that retired, uh, Correnti, okay? Tony Correnti, he, he obviously blew that game. It seemed like the most rigged game ever, and there was no punishment for Tony Correnti, okay? In fact, Casius Marsh got fined, like, $5,000 for, you know, that, that BS call, okay? So... There is no punishment for these refs. They're allowed to get away with this and it absolutely sucks. But what can you do? You can't do anything about it, okay? You can only control what you can control. And the Chicago Bears still probably could have won this game, okay, if our defense was on the same level as the Chicago Bears offense. I cannot believe I'm saying this right now because I've never said this probably in my entire life as a Chicago Bears fan. Aside from 2013, the Chicago Bears offense is significantly, significantly better then the Chicago Bears defense, and it's the only reason why the Bears are in football games, okay? This has happened three games now in a row in which, okay, maybe not the Patriots game because the defense was pretty good in that Pats game, but two games in a row in which our offense has been so glaringly better than the Chicago Bears defense. Like, this does not happen in Bears history, and honestly, guys, I'm kind of enjoying it, okay? Because obviously, I know that it does suck losing games, but if you are going to lose games in a rebuilding year, it's better to lose games in, in the manner in which the Chicago Bears are losing games. Because at least if you're losing high-scoring shootouts, your quarterback is getting better. And ultimately, what matters in this league? Your quarterback, okay? If you don't have a quarterback, if you don't have a good offense, you're not going to consistently be good in the NFL. The Chicago Bears have built great defenses so many times in my life, okay? But they have never built the offenses that have been able to be good consistently. If the Chicago Bears now have a consistently good offense, it's early, but if they can build 
this into being a consistently good offense long term, the Bears arrow, man, is pointing up big time, okay? Because we have $130 million in cap space, which we can use on more offensive linemen, more receivers, probably on the defense too. The defense needs big time help. We have a first round pick that might be pretty high now because we're losing a whole lot of games. There's you know, a lot of quarterbacks available in this draft class. So we can probably trade back with the QB needy team and get even more picks. So like the arrow is pointing upwards big time for the Chicago Bears future. Like I've honestly never been so optimistic about the Bears future aside from probably after 2018. But even in 2018, guys, even though our offense was like top half of the league in scoring, it was good because of the defense. Okay, the Bears offense still ranked like bottom 10 in terms of yards gained per game, okay, because they were just taking advantage of great field position the, the Bears defense was giving them and all the turnovers the Bears defense was forcing, okay? That's why the Chicago Bears offense scored all the points they scored in 2018. Well, this year is completely different, okay? The Bears defense is giving the Bears offense practically nothing throughout the last couple of games, but still, they have put together dominant offensive performances, okay? Moving the ball really well throughout all the games, scoring a whole lot of points. They scored 29 against the Cowboys. They scored 32 now against the Dolphins. They scored uh, 33, could have been 40 against the Patriots. So like this offense now is really rolling. It's probably the best three game stretch for the Bears offense I've seen in quite some time, probably since, I don't know, 2018. But again, guys, in 2018, that was because of the Bears defense. This is not because of the Bears defense. That is a big freaking deal because when the Chicago Bears build an actually good defense which they hopefully do long term okay after drafting defense after acquiring better defensive players this team man could be one of the best in the entire nfl okay especially if the quarterback is playing as good as he is playing right now let me talk about qb justin fields because guys this is the reason i was going crazy on draft night in 2021 there was no reason in the world why justin fields should have slid the way he slid to the Chicago Bears. Okay, I'm convinced that was an act of God or something because there's no reason that should have happened, okay, for the Chicago Bears because he was dominant in college football. He had it, he had it all, okay? He had the big arm. He had the mobility, obviously, like we have seen on display recently. He played in a big-time conference against big-time opponents. He out Trevor Lawrence in the college football playoffs, uh, you know, on the game's biggest stages. And he was right up there, man, with Trevor Lawrence as a football prospect, as a quarterback prospect. But for some reason, he slid all the way down to the Chicago Bears. And that's looking more and more miraculous as the weeks progress, as the years progress. Because this guy, man, was the entire Chicago Bears offense in this game. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that, okay? Because the Chicago Bears in this game, they had... How much total offense did they have? Let me pull up the stats right now. The Chicago Bears had 368 yards of total offense. Justin Fields had 123 yards passing and 178 rushing yards. Broke the all-time record for a single game quarterback rushing okay Michael Vick has never done this Lamar Jackson has never done this Justin Fields had the most rushing yards by a quarterback in a single game in NFL history okay that is special stuff that is big time stuff that is legendary stuff okay that is just stuff that we don't see as Bears fans okay our quarterback being this dynamic on the ground in time and time and time again man he bailed the Chicago Bears out with his legs and let me talk about that 61 yard rushing touchdown because man i have no idea i genuinely have no idea how he turned that into a 61 yard run okay that should not have been a 61 yard run it seemed like he was going to just pick up a couple yards i mean he actually pump faked down the field to mooney which may have you know drawn a defender into him which obviously helped clear the path for a big run but still man he probably should have been tackled but the reason why he was not tackled is because he is one of the fastest players in the entire NFL, okay? Not just one of the fastest quarterbacks, but one of the fastest players in the entire NFL. He is an athlete, okay? One of the best athletes the Bears have ever had in their history. Definitely at the quarterback position, but also all over the field, okay? He's a 4.4 guy, so just accelerating as fast as he could, he ran all the way to the end zone, which hats off to Mooney, too. He had a couple nice blocks on that play, clearing the way at the end for Justin Fields, so love to see that, but... That is just big time stuff, man. Like that stuff you cannot game plan for as an NFL defense. Obviously, you know, they had spies on the field for Justin Fields. They knew that Justin Fields was going to try to run with the football, but they still could not stop it because that's how fast that Justin Fields actually is. And with his pump faking down the field, with his, 
improvement as a passer as well. He only had 123 passing yards in this game, but he did have three passing touchdowns. And, you know, he had gotten better over the last couple of weeks. So you obviously cannot just you know, only play against the run, it makes it impossible to game plan for as a defense. And it's stuff that, you know, Lamar Jackson, Michael Vick have done in the past. And Justin Fields even took it to a whole nother level in this game. Okay, breaking multiple sacks, picking up big time first downs on third down, using his legs, just bailing the Chicago Bears offense out so many times. Like I, I was counting on my hand the amount of times that Justin Fields just like broke a tackle. It was at least like four or five, or sorry, broke a sack. Okay, he broke at least four or five sacks from his ability to run with the football. So Justin Fields as a runner was phenomenal in this game. Okay, the best running back we had, but he was also very effective as a passer in this game too. I know he only had 123 passing yards, and yes, you would like to see that number a little bit higher, but he did put the Chicago Bears in position to win this game down the stretch. If only we got that call on the pass interference, or if Equinemia St. Brown caught that pretty good ball on four down. Okay, that was a nice ball from Fields. EQ should have caught that. He's obviously not a high level receiver. And he dropped it, which, you know, sucks. So, you know, Fields did what he could. Um, He was quick with the ball, quick getting the ball out of his hands, which props to Luke Getzey for that too, because Luke Getzey was calling a lot of plays that were getting the ball out of Justin Fields' hands pretty fast. Okay, a lot of screens, a lot of stuff horizontally, which you don't always love to see, but it was working in this game. Okay, the screens were working, the tight end screens were working. You know, we had a couple to Cole Komet. We had, you know, other types of screens to Mooney. We had sprints to the outside where Fields is on the move, you know, running to the right and trying to hit somebody down the sideline. He did that multiple times in this game. Okay, big time completions on third down. Uh, one in the red zone too to Cole Komet, which Cole Komet took in for his second touchdown of the day, which... Man, we'll talk about Cole Komet too next. He had a monster performance in this one. But like, I was really pleased with the game plan for Justin Fields in this game. Because obviously it was a lot of quarterback runs in which, you know, Justin Fields did bail the Chicago Bears offense out. But there were also, you know, design plays to get the ball out of Fields' hands pretty fast. And obviously the throw of the game by Justin Fields, man, was to Darnell Mooney. It was a 16-yard pass. Okay, Mooney made a fantastic catch for him, a diving catch. Um, I believe that was on Xavier Howard, which props to Mooney, man. I mean, that was a big time catch. Okay, a catch that big time receivers make. But Fields put that ball, man, in such a beautiful spot. Okay, only where Mooney could make a play on that ball. And that's the type of deep accuracy. It wasn't really deep accuracy. It was only a 16 yard pass. But that's the type of accuracy you need to see from Fields in the red zone more consistently. Okay, he's had some misses early on, but he's getting the hang of it now. And he's getting chemistry with some of his best receivers. So love to see that throw by Justin Fields. Okay, that was a high level throw. Okay, that good quarterbacks in this league can make. And Justin Fields, man, he's looking like a good quarterback right now. So he finished the day with only 123 passing yards, but three passing touchdowns, zero interceptions. He did throw an interception, which got called back. So we're not going to talk about that in this video because Fields has gotten pretty unlucky with picks in the past in which, you know, receivers have dropped passes that have turned into picks. So like, let him have this um, on his stat sheet, okay? A little bit of good karma his way. And he finished with a passer rating of 106.7. So pretty efficient through the air. Um, really dominant on the ground, you know, long term, hopefully we get more passes for him because you don't want to always see your quarterback only running with the football. But man, Fields is carrying this team on his back. He's getting better with every passing week. And you have to be so damn excited about this if you are a Chicago Bears fan, because it really feels like the Chicago Bears finally have a franchise quarterback. OK, and when the team around him is better watch out okay because this would definitely be a win with a better defense and maybe with better receivers around him too um so yeah hopefully that happens in the future but talking about the rest of the bears offense now i'll talk about chase claypool first because obviously he was a big acquisition that a lot of people were excited about and he only finished this game with uh two catches for 13 yards he had obviously that pass interference drawn in the first half he should have had another one drawn in the second half which did not get called because the refs absolutely suck but he didn't make a massive impact in his first game but keep in mind this is his first game with the chicago bears okay his first game also with qb justin fields and obviously that chemistry is not there right now okay and he still has to learn the playbook he did not play every single snap because he does not know the entire playbook he literally got here like four days ago okay so relax with Chase Claypool he will be fine I believe long term because he is a dominant ball winning guy and in this game and he still helped us out okay get those pass interference calls well one should have been called but one did get called which led to a field goal for the Bears offense and he also was drawing attention from the Dolphins defense which led to opportunities for other Bears receivers on the field like I'm not sure if 
Claypool was on the field on that Mooney touchdown, but if he was, you know, Mooney had a chance there partly because he was one-on-one -on -one with that guy, which Mooney has been getting doubled up or bracketed pretty often so far this year because he was our only guy worth the damn at the receiver spot. Well, that's no longer the case anymore. And long-term, man, I think this fit could still work out pretty well. It just was not there in this first game. Talking about Cole Komet, though, what a game. Okay, one of his best games as a member of the Chicago Bears. He was great blocking today, like he has been for the majority of the season. But today, he was also a factor in the passing game. Okay, he had two touchdowns and 41 yards on five receptions. He had six targets, too. Okay, Justin Fields is really targeting him a lot, partly because plays are being drawn up for Cole Komet unlike Matt Nagy did in the past. Okay, there really wasn't much involvement from the tight end um, in the Matt Nagy offense, it felt like. Well, that's totally changing as of late because Cole Komet has been getting, you know, scripted plays designed to go for him. We had a couple tight end sweeps too, which I cannot believe that tight end sweep actually worked. He picked up like, I think, nine yards on that carry, um, which was pretty funny. And we also had a couple tight end screens too. So, we're finding ways to get Cole Komet involved. He's a big presence in the red zone too, as he should be because he is a big physical guy. And you guys saw that on display on that run in which Cole Komet completely bulldozed, completely knocked the hell out of whatever poor Miami Dolphins defender that was. Okay, I actually felt sorry for the guy because Cole Komet completely ran through that guy. I mean, that was insane. So love to see Cole Komet finally being utilized in this offense because this is how it should have been his entire career in Chicago. And maybe he can stay in Chicago long term if he keeps on doing stuff like this so overall man really happy with the bears offense okay to score 32 points you know you should be winning football games when you're scoring this many points obviously you would have liked to see us put together the game winning drive but part of that was out of our control because the refs sucked but eq sam brown he should have caught that ball to move the chains anyways so it was kind of our fault as well but i cannot say anything bad about the chicago bears offense they carried the team throughout this game which you are not used to as a bears fan talking about the defense now they put together some pretty nice stops finally at the end of the game but it was too little too late okay Tua Tagovailoa had one of his best games as a pro he had 302 passing yards three passing touchdowns uh, the Dolphins had 379 total yards of offense in this game partly because we could get no pressure whatsoever on the quarterback I don't think we had a single sack. Yeah, we had zero sacks in this game. We had very little pressures. And going up against Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, that is obviously not going to work like it wasn't working the entire afternoon. I would have liked to see us blitz a little bit more. But even when we were blitzing, sending pressure, you know, two was getting the ball out pretty quick to his receivers in space and down the field as well. And he found the soft spot in, his, in the zone coverage multiple times throughout this game okay so Tua was playing pretty good in this game I don't want to take anything away from him he did have a couple bad underthrows though which he got lucky to get past interference calls on so got a little bit lucky there but like our defense man just made it too easy for Tua like they have made it too easy for other quarterbacks this year okay Kirk Cousins Dak Prescott guys that can sit in the pocket and deliver darts from the pocket they're killing this Bears defense because, again, we don't get pressure on the quarterback. I know our defensive backs were not good today, okay? So Kyler Gordon had a couple missed tackles. He had a couple slip-ups in zone against Tyreek Hill, which is obviously going to happen. I mean, Tyreek Hill has destroyed so many cornerbacks in this league. Jalen Johnson got destroyed by Tyreek one time. Uh, Jalen Waddle was killing us down the field. Kendall Vildor had to interfere on a pass. I think that was to Waddle, maybe, or maybe it was to Tyreek, one of them. And, you know, he, he also got injured on that play. So he had to go out for the game after that point. And, like, we had no way to stop the weapons the Dolphins have. Okay, the top two weapons the Dolphins have. But it would have been easier if we had any sort of presence on the defensive line. Okay, the battle is always won up front. Like, all the good defenses in the NFL, they have great defensive lines. And right now, the Bears just do not have the talent on the defensive line. Which is why I really feel like our first pick in the 2023 NFL Draft might be a defensive lineman okay it's looking like that maybe a guy like jillian carter from georgia okay a guy that can rush the passer from the interior he had you know that sack that safety against um tennessee on saturday so like he would be a guy to add potentially and we just need so much more help on the entire defense we need linebackers obviously we traded away roqua smith which would make our defense worse in the short term we did still allow 49 against the cowboys even with roquan so we weren't a good defense anyways but like obviously having help having him would have helped in this game and like long term the bears need to make more investments on the defensive side of the football in the draft and also in free agency but i would much rather have it be this way guys where the investments have to be made on the defense because 
this is an offensive minded league. Okay. Usually the best offenses in the NFL end up winning. And if our offense continues being this dominant, if our defense just gets a little bit better, just be league average, we could be a pretty good football team next year. And obviously, I don't want to go overboard in already crowning the Bears offense. I know they've had three pretty good games in a row now, but it's still a long season. We still have to keep this up long term and we do need more talent still on the offense. Like we could use another receiver. We could use more offensive linemen. We could use maybe an extra tight end. So like we're not done yet building this offense up. But the fact that the Bears offense is so clearly ahead of the Bears defense is just so damn refreshing because I'm sick of the Bears always having a better defense than an offense in the league in which obviously offense is becoming the most important thing. Okay, that's how you win sustainably long term with good quarterback play and with good offensive play and hopefully the defense gets better over time. So overall, like I'm not going to be mad at this loss whatsoever because I still feel like the refs kind of robbed us on this one. Like we would have maybe won at least push it into overtime if we got the pass interference call at the end. Um, if some other BS calls didn't happen, I'm obviously not going to blame the entire loss on the rest though because we could have played better defensively. But like this is just this rebuild man for the Chicago Bears is just working so beautifully now because like even though we're losing games, we're losing games in pretty close manners. Our quarterback is getting better every single week. Our team is showing fight every single week. Um, our offensive coordinator right now is looking like a genius and like the arrow is pointing upwards big time for the Chicago Bears and I'm so excited to watch the rest of the Bears football season now, okay? Because if our offense is looking this good, like games are going to be pretty damn exciting to watch. So let me know what you guys think about this game in the comments down below. What are you taking away from this game? What are your thoughts um, on the long-term future of this team? Because I'm pretty damn op optimistic. I'm pretty damn happy. I'm happy about the progress that QB1 is making. And it's just like, it's so good to be a Bears fan right now, which you usually cannot say um, many times being a fan of this cursed franchise. But I think we finally have our guy, man. We finally have the quarterback we've been looking for. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. But as always, bear down. <laughs>